Hi, Hi welcome, welcome back, back to Halloween, Halloween House. House. So we have yet another Delphi video for you. We finally got the long-awaited probable cause mm -hmm. affidavit. We did read it through. Um, it brings up some things we knew, some things we didn't know, some questions, more questions. More questions <laughs> than answers. I'm, I'm really disappointed in what is in here. Yeah, um, we, we really... We think that the police have got to have more info they, they that have they're to. holding back. They have and to. That they've got a solid case. I wouldn't take this to trial, which is no. what they have. Anyways, um, one part of the um, article was there is also a forty caliber unspent round less than two feet away from victim two's body, between victim one and victim two's body. The round was unspent and had extraction marks on it. Now, um, we are. I'm going to... We're going to get into this in a little bit. I will mm -hmm. um, do a little demonstration on my personal firearm to give you an idea of what an unspent cartridge is and what that evidence means. To me, mm -hmm. it means nothing, but hopefully you'll understand when we get to that part. Right. And it, it is very interesting to know what that means. Um, we kind of theorized that there may have been a gun involved because corralling two girls in the woods with just your hands... Yeah. Or any other weapon for that matter. I mean, that'd be really difficult. I so, think so I think too. the threat of a gun would probably keep them in your yeah. periphery. So we did, we did kind of figure there was a gun involved, mm -hmm. but this is all um, allegedly and supposedly and maybes. We don't even know if Richard Allen really did it. Yeah. We're, we're going to get to that. Right. Um, so the police interviewed different people that said that they saw this guy. Um, Notably, three juveniles who were there, they said they saw him towards the Freedom Bridge, which this is the bridge that goes over the highway. This is not the high bridge that goes over the railroad tracks and the, the river, or I'm sorry, the former yeah, railroad track. Right. Um, this is like the, the beginning, beginning of the trail exactly. right by the parking lot. So they saw him, you know, right at the beginning of the trail. Um, they gave some descriptions, which are pretty interesting. Um, so mind you, it's three girls. Um, they said he was kind of creepy looking. And the first one said he was wearing like blue jeans and like a really light blue jacket. And his hair was gray, maybe a little brown. He didn't show his face. The jacket was maybe a duck canvas type jacket. So we're thinking like a heavy jacket um wintertime hunting jacket something like that is kind of what they're getting at mm -hmm. um which makes sense it it was warmish but it was still february and right. it was afternoon so it could have been cooling off at that point it's about 50 i guess they mm -hmm. were saying so um but then the other girl said she said hi to him but he glared at her and she said he was wearing all black and had something covering his mouth. He was not very tall, but had a bigger build, but he wasn't bigger than 5'10". I don't know how old these girls were. They It obviously doesn't identify them, which it shouldn't. No, but I agree. I think to most kids, 5'10 would probably seem somewhat tall. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, all black is very different from blue jeans right. and a blue jacket. He was wearing black hoodie, black jeans, and black boots. Yeah. And he had his hands in his pockets is what she said. Huh. So there's two different descriptions right there from the same group of girls. And then the third one said that the man on the trail was wearing either a black or a blue windbreaker. And it had a collar and he had the hood up from clothing under his jacket. And he was wearing baggy jeans and was taller than her. So we're going from a canvas heavier coat to a black hoodie to a windbreaker mm -hmm. so we're kind of all over the board here so i don't know i i really don't know um obviously everyone remembers things differently and, and she she f further states that um she advised she did not get a good look at his face but believed him to be a white male yeah that's that's horrible so and we're not saying anything against and we don't even know if this was him. Yeah, but we're not saying, like, we're not mm -hmm. criticizing the witnesses. No, no, not, no. That's not where we're coming from. 
but those are three very different mm -hmm. descriptions. Yeah. Furthermore, Richard Allen admitted to being on the bridge that day. Yeah. So <laughs> their witness testimony only corroborates what we already know. So mm -hmm. how is that in any way helpful? Right. At all. So then there was another lady. Well, I'm going to assume lady. Sorry. It could be lady, man, whatever. Um, that well, said, they, yes, they use the term she, so oh, okay, yeah. that's where I got that from. Okay, um, said she saw four juvenile females walking on a bridge over the road as she was driving underneath on her way to the park. Yeah, you can usually tell girls versus boys the way they move, so mm -hmm. um, but that is kind of a highway, so I don't, I don't know. know, but she said she saw them on the bridge, so she knew they were there. And she said there were no other cars parked across from Mears Farm when she parked. So she parked off at 300. She mm -hmm. didn't park in the parking lot where you would cross the Freedom Bridge to go on the trail. Um, she said that she saw a man that was a white male wearing blue jeans and a blue jean jacket. So the blue jean jacket, I could see the canvas jacket and the blue jean jacket kind of being it's still in the same kind of area sort in someone's of, but mind. it's still yet another fourth yeah. description. Right. That is four different. Yeah. I mean, I could see if all four said the same exact same thing, but all four are saying something completely different. Or if they at least all said a blue jacket. So, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, very different. And she said that she had been halfway between the bridge and the parking lot. And past two girls walking towards the high bridge. And she thinks the girls were Abby and Libby. Yeah. Um, the um, Across from where this little drop-off point was is Hoosier Highlander. And they had a video camera. Hoosier Harvester. Her, Hoosier yeah. Harvester. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and so it actually captured some of these vehicles and people mm -hmm. uh, matching these storylines that they were getting. So they definitely all were there at that time frame, and, um, and at the places that they said they were. So that it wasn't like they were making it up. Yeah. And then they go in to video surveillance and mm -hmm. all that other kinds of stuff. Um, now to car <laughs> descriptions. This is really, again, like... really interesting. Um, not everyone's a car person. But I think these conflicting ideas are really, really far out. Yeah, because, all right, so someone is um, a purple PT Cruiser, a small SUV type vehicle. I think pretty much everybody knows a PT Cruiser when you see one. Very distinctive. Yeah. And then they said a Ford Focus and a Ford 500, which are both small sedans. So for someone to describe them as an SUV, I, I really don't think those would That's be mistaken for an SUV. Yeah. And somebody else said a smart car. And again, just like the PT Cruiser, that is extremely noticeable. And, and, and even from a distance. And I know a purple and black. How are you going to confuse that? Um, I don't know. Because Ford. The one the o'clock? Ford, well, the Ford purple is purple purple. Yes, it is. It's like purple. Yeah. And also they're saying, you know, this is around 1.30 in the afternoon. So the sun would have been still pretty prominent. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been getting dark. If it was getting dark, yes, I could see mistaking purple, blue, black, all for each other because it is a dark color. And if the sun's going right. down. Yeah. But, but not yeah. at 1.30. Um, and they said that the car was parked at the former Child Protective Services building, which... It's not near the parking lot of the trail, and I don't know. It just seems odd. But then there was a report, and this is really interesting, um, that someone saw on 300 North a male subject walking west away from the Monon High Bridge and he was wearing a blue colored jacket and blue jeans and was muddy and bloody like he had been in a fight. Now this 
I when it's, I do put some stock in because that is absolutely something you're going to remember. It's going to be mm -hmm. like, oh my God, it's going to like shock you. And it's something you're going to really remember. Yes. Um, I do believe that the investigators had this information early on. No, in one of our other videos, we were convinced that he parked in, in the, the cemetery, cemetery and came and went from the cemetery because we said if he was walking down 300 North, he's going to be seen. Someone yes. would have seen him. So someone did see him. So, but at that time, we did not have this information. Exactly. So now that the information is mm -hmm. out, it's like, exactly like we said, you're not going to walk down 300 North. Mm -hmm. I think we said that you're going to be muddy and all that. Yes. Walking down 300 North and someone's going to see you. Mm -hmm. So we were correct on that note. And at least. we don't know exactly where on 300 North he was seen. Exactly. So. He may have come up through the cemetery. He may have come up through one of those other points of entry that we showed in through a field. Well, I think you now, now, and then they also in the affidavit tell you exactly where the crime scene was. And again, we were, I think, 10 feet off about. We were in the area. Yeah, because and that wasn't public information. No. But um, he still could have, when everything was all done with, he could have still come up to the trail cemetery through the cemetery and mm -hmm. onto 300 north. Yep. That would so, total sense. Yeah. But we just didn't have the information at that time. We do now, though. Mm hmm So, mm. interesting. So, we did kind of look to see where this guy lived. It's not too far, but... Two I, and a half miles as the crow fries. Yeah. I, I and think, he could walk it, but... I, he'd have to go through fields. Mm -hmm. He'd have to cross the, the creek at some creek point. somewhere. So probably not. Not likely. Not likely to The have other walked. thing he owned at that point in time, a 2016 black Ford Focus and a 2006 gray Ford 500, which are two smaller sedans mm -hmm. and darker colored. So that kind of matches what people did Described, for the sort purple, of. purple PT Cruiser. <laughs> yeah. They could never be mistaken for a purple no, PT Cruiser. Ever. No. You can if, see. if you were colorblind. But even and the shape. shape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the so, shape is, is pretty much a giveaway. Right, exactly. Um, so they did, the police did interview him several times. And he did say he went to the Monon High Bridge that day to watch fish. To watch fish. In and, February. And... If you've seen photos of this bridge, so it's a railroad trestle, old, looks rickety. I, I was not going on this thing. You can see through the railroad ties. There are no rails, nothing. Yeah. This was is... he leaning over yeah. the bridge mm -hmm. to look down? Well, he did seem awfully comfortable on that bridge. Whoever the person in the mm -hmm. video was looked comfortable on that bridge, which is why we said he's very local and yeah. he's crossed the bridge before. But to I sit, would be terrified. Yeah, but <laughs> to stand around on the bridge and to look at fish over. and look at... I, I, no. Whatever. No. I don't know. Whatever. I, I, that, to me, it sounds extremely silly. That seemed odd, yes. Um, if you're going to look at fish, you're going to walk down the stairs that they had on the one point of the trail yeah, and, and actually, go by the river and look in the river exactly i agree because um, it was pretty shallow so you could see fish in it yes i agree but i think you need to be closer and not <laughs> teetering off of a bridge not about a, i think 70 feet off the ground i don't know it's, yeah, it's high okay um so he did say he walked out on the first platform of the bridge and then he walked back and he sat on a bench on the trail and he left Okay, he had also at one point said he was walking, staring at his phone, looking at stocks or something. And I just don't see why you would bother walking on a trail to go look at your phone. Mm -hmm. um, he did say he parked his car on the side of an old building, which is what people describe where they saw the vehicle that... I, I don't believe the building is there anymore, but mm -hmm. there is a little parking area there. And you can get to right by the Freedom Bridge from that trail. Um, still a little odd, but at least it, he did admit that that was probably his car. And he said he was wearing blue jeans and either a blue or black Carhartt jacket with a hood. Would explain the canvas 
jacket that the one girl described. But so, all this all this evidence doesn't help because no. you're just corroborating each other's stories. It's not proof of anything. It's proof, it's proof he was there. That's it. Mm -hmm. And there were plenty of people there. Yeah, it's a popular trail. So, so yeah. that's interesting. Or not? Yeah. yeah. He said that he owns firearms and he keeps them at his home. Um, they talked to his wife and she said. He did have guns and knives at the residence and that he owns a blue Carhartt jacket. So along with probably half the population of Indiana. Yeah, probably. It's more common <laughs> for people in Indiana to have guns than to have not. Yes. Especially the further south you go. Yeah. There's, I mean, a lot of hunters and self-protection. It's, um, I'd put the numbers eight out of 10 people probably own a firearm. I think so. It's it's up there. It's whether not they, nine out of ten. Whether they admit to it or not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they did go to his house and they took jackets and other stuff and including a Sig Sauer um forty caliber pistol, um, which they seem to be focusing on, um, based on what the bullets that or the bullet that they say they found which we're going to which get we're to definitely going to talk about yes, absolutely um because i learned something today mm -hmm. and um i think everyone else would be interested um he did tell the police he never allowed anyone to use or borrow his guns and he had no no reason of why a spent bullet would be at a crime scene that he says he was not at so we don't know um when, um, so they had this article, I'm sure you, most of you have probably read the probable cause affidavit, but um, the interpretation of identification is subjective in nature and based on relevant scientific research and the reporting examiner's training and experience. They do not tell us who this ballistic expert is. They do not tell us what his experience is. They do not tell us what his training is. They don't tell us what... Uh, um, who made the bullet? What make is it? What brand? They only tell us the caliber. Could it means anything. nothing. There's hundreds of millions of forty caliber bullets on the planet. It mm -hmm. means nothing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, they did um, a few tests to make sure you know to see if the firearm was working and everything like that. And it was. Um, he purchased it in two thousand one. The six hour um P two two six isn't a very um uncommon gun it's not a rare gun by any means it's not a collector's item it's not anything that's like unusual to own mm -hmm. you know it's it's fairly common so and it wasn't like he purchased it the week before right he's owned it since 2001 mm -hmm. so um yeah it's also makes you wonder if if he was the person who did it, yeah. why did he still have the gun? Yeah, and that's another thing I have a real issue with. Um, I think anybody with a half a brain that shot two people would immediately get rid of the gun. Mm -hmm. Why would you keep it for that long? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Very odd. Very, very odd. So, basically their conclusion is that he was not seen on the trail after 2.13 p.m. that day because he was in the woods with the girls. Um, they are thinking that, that that unspent round is determining that he was there. It was his gun. Um, and then they, they believe that he was the one walking back to his vehicle Muddy on the county blood. road. The other thing, it doesn't really mention about the car. Maybe he didn't have it anymore. No, car. he still owned both of those cars. Oh, he did. So the car would be a mess. I don't know. So he didn't get rid of the guns. He didn't get rid of the vehicles. Come yeah, on. It, it's just odd. And then another question I have is, what precipitated this search warrant in the first place? In these interviews in the first place, so many years afterwards. Yeah, was he related to this Anthony Schatz profile? Um, but they had to have a reason to write this probable cause yeah. affidavit and execute a search warrant. What was it? Yeah, there's there has to be something else big that they have. That there's just, more information that they're withholding. Again, yeah, they wanted to get enough out there to get him in jail. Yeah. Um, I 
I kind of feel once the the Anthony shot thing came out, I kind of feel like the girls may have somewhat been lured out there thinking they were gonna yeah because at first i really some guy i thought it was a crime of opportunity but now that we know a little bit more now it's more like they they were gonna meet somebody and they were young yeah they probably thought they were gonna meet this guy maybe kiss him or something i don't know i mean little girls you don't you don't realize the big picture on things like that Mm -mm. and they probably figured we go to this place all the time we know where we're at everything's cool right and we know this guy. We've been talking to him on the internet. So, um, the 40 unspent bullet. So, here's a demonstration. This is my gun. It's oh. not loaded. But... Okay. So, this is my personal firearm. Um, it's a 380. It The caliber doesn't matter um, for purposes of demonstration. Um, all semi-automatics are the same. They have a slide and there's an injection pin in there. Um, there is no difference with the magazine in. So, so that's chambering around. So now the, um, weapon is ready to be fired. Okay. So now what happened is what they're talking about a spent cartridge or unspent cycled through whatever the term they use is he probably forgot that he had chambered one. So when, um, he went to go shoot it. He did that again, and that's what happens. the The bullet comes out, and that's what they're they're talking about. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that eight more times. Okay, is there? A, I think we might be missing one. Yes. All right, whatever. I believe I jammed myself up. I'll take care of that at another time. Anyways. Safety's on. So we got seven bullets here that have been cycled through my gun. Eight. Okay. Yes, eight. Okay, so. All eight of these bullets are now going to have some kind of microscopic little mark on it from where the pin hit it. Okay, now let's pretend all eight of these bullets were shot from eight different guns. Every single one, even though they were shot from eight different guns, can come back to this. Can be said, yep, it was shot. Shot or chambered? uh, um, Cycled through. Okay. Shooting would give it the unique imprint, correct? Exactly. So shooting it is a whole different story. That means it travels through the barrel. It spins as it comes out the barrel. It gives it a very unique that's that's way more like a fingerprint but simply cycling it through like i demonstrated like i said if all eight of these were cycled through like that from eight different guns every single one of them if you get every single one could they would say yep it appears it was it it came through your gun even Mm -hmm. though they didn't okay you just cannot that's it's just not science the slide is all in the same place. The extraction pin is all in the same place. They're going to have the same markings on it. It's So it's, really, if it hasn't been fired, the one thing that would make it unique is someone's fingerprint on it. Basically, yeah. But like I said, if all eight of those were shot out of eight different guns, they're still going to match my gun. Mm-hmm. So, no, I don't put any stock into that evidence at all. Very interesting. Good. So those are just our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if this is all they have and this is what they're going to trial with, I don't have high hopes. If I was on the jury and this is what I was presented with, it would be not guilty. I would absolutely vote not guilty. There's no evidence. The eyewitnesses are only corroborating what he said, what he already admitted to, except for the one that saw him muddy and bloody. I do put a lot of stock into that. Mm -hmm. Um, gun evidence the bullet worthless means nothing yep they're they have to be withholding something one Mm -hmm. thing um autopsy reports why are we not talking about this why are they Mm -hmm. not i I don't know if it should be released i don't know i don't know yeah but whatever there's got to be there's a reason there's got to be more evidence there's got to be uh spent bullets um, DNA, fingerprints, there's got to be something mm-hmm. more that they're hiding. Maybe it's in the autopsy report. 
Maybe it's going to come out later with something else um, when they do discovery. Yeah. When they let the um, defense team know exactly all the evidence they have. Mm -hmm. Because if this is it, yeah, that's not good. And it's we not good at all. Continue to pray for the families. And Absolutely. We want justice just to, as much as they do and everybody else does. Yes. So. Um, so, yeah, we're hopeful, but I'm I'm just not impressed by the probable cause affidavit. I'm hoping for, on a lot more evidence. Mm -hmm. So January, I guess, is the next hearing, which of course always changes. Be, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well, All thank right. you so much for watching. Uh, any questions or anything? Go ahead and ask us below. And as always, stay spooky. Yeah.